So all you do already once, the minute it gives you at least half of a reason, you latch onto that and say, hey, see what you did against Mali. Let us get the foreign coach. I know, I know how these things work. After a 2-1 win over Ghana in our first international friendly in this month of March, the Super Eagles went on to lose 2-0 in their second game against Mali. The question now arises, can Finidi George lead the Super Eagles to glory land? My name is Jidechi Chidezi and this is Crossfire, brought to you by Beth Bonanza. All right, Tunde, so um, Nigeria lost their second friendly game against Mali. Won the first one against Ghana, lost the second one against Mali. Uh, what's your take of that performance? Um, look, my take is that I've been quite impressed by Finidi Judge. I've given my thoughts on him on, on, on daily takes and, uh, you know, and whatnot. Like, I like what I've seen. The result against Mali is not good, yes. But I've seen some of you reactionary people online talking about blah, blah, blah. And yes, I understand. It's confirmation bias. So what you did already once. The minute it gives you at least half of a reason, you latch onto that and say, hey, see what you did against Mali. Let us get the foreign coach. I know, I know how these things work. Those of you that are getting paid to say these things, you know yourself. I'm not going to call anybody's name. But yes, Yes, my here's my take on this. We saw Nigeria play better than we've played in quite a while against Ghana. It's just a friendly game, yes, but it was also Finidi's first game in charge of a team that literally took charge of within three days. And if you can see such imprints within three days, how much more can you expect when you give him time, when you give him opportunity to call up his own you know, set of players. Remember, this team was not you know, exactly assembled by him. And even then, the team has been bedeviled with injuries. It was Simen, you know, uh, Boniface, lots of players you know, pulling out of uh, last minute because of injuries. So, with all of that in mind, I would say it is still a solid performance. The game against Mali had way too many, way too many individual, individual errors. Uh, Chidozi Awazem's error for the first goal. Horrible. Horrible. And I think it might even be time to evaluate some places in the national team set of moving forward. Jamilu Collins as well. Below par. Look at the chance that Siri has missed. Uh, but Simon suffered that, uh, that injury. Sorry to him. I hope he recovers as well. But he was not doing much before he got injured anyway. My assessment is that this has been a solid international break given the circumstances. We had a coach that didn't even know he was going to be the coach until like three days to the games. You had a coach that was appointed as an interim after an unknown hand that released and compiled a list of players to be invited to the national team. So like all of that in mind, I'm very satisfied and you know I can't I can't wait to see what what's to come for the Super Eagles. Um Tosin, Nigeria's performance against Mali, what would you say about that? Looking at the international break, I do I am not impressed with the Super Eagles of Nigeria and obviously not really with Finley the judge because he just became the coach of the team. Actually with the performance and the opposition. The, the goal of this international break was to prepare for the upcoming FIFA World Cup qualifiers against South Africa and Benin Republic. So we played against Ghana. We played against the Ghana team, and no disrespect to Ghana, because obviously they beat us to qualify for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. But ever since that, obviously they qualified, they sold their soul for that tournament. That's just the simple truth. They sold their soul, and they've been on a downward trend since then. They went to the World Cup, they didn't do much. They went to the AFCON, we saw them at the AFCON. They couldn't beat Namibia. They couldn't beat Cape Verde. And even after the Super Eagles game, they played against a lowly Uganda side. They couldn't beat Uganda. So I don't know why Nigeria, apart from bragging rights, I'm not really impressed with that 2-1 win. What, what did, what did Finidi do? He brought in Ndidi, who missed the AFCON, and he paired him with Oyeka, and pushed Iwobi into an advanced position, which is common sense. That Iwobi cannot play as, it's just common, it's just that like you had a daft coach, but that's a different discussion. You understand? Then the game against Mali. Mali is among one of the top sides, obviously, on the continent. They, they, gave, they gave Ivory Coast a run for their money. The performance was not really there. Nigeria had, I think, two or three shots on target. So uh, the, the, the Finidi George football that people are hailing in the game against Ghana, I, I couldn't see it against Mali. So over the international break, and knowing what is at stake during the upcoming, obviously, FIFA World Cup qualifiers, I am not impressed. And it doesn't give me a lot of hope that Nigeria will be able to climb above pressure and obviously qualify for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. All right. Um, Tunde, uh, Tosin have already said what he thinks about finishing job. But let me ask you, we are entering a very important time in Nigerian football where the NFF have to make a decision. Do you mm -hmm. think we have to go forward with finishing the George at this point? 
um, have always been clear even before this national break that Finity Judge should be the prime candidate for the job. It is just natural progression. Most places, when a coach is fired, next in consideration is the assistant coach. That's just how it works, generally speaking. Yes, it's really even more so for us that we don't necessarily have lots of uh, candidates. The coaches we want, we can't afford. The ones we can afford, we still owe money. The ones that are even inside down, those ones that want to owe money. So we then look at which one of them is the best option. And I can't see a better option than Finity Judge. And the games, the last two games, in my opinion, have only gone a long way to solidify that feeling in my mind. I like what I saw against Ghana. Like I said, it's, it, because he has not been with the team for long, the excellence was not sustained, but the flashes we saw gives you optimism for more. The Ghana game, the first half was pretty good. Second half was not good at all, even though they scored that incredible goal, this goal by Adibola Lokman in the second half. But they didn't play well in that second half. So, like, yeah, you see those flashes here and there. Even the game against Mali, you see the, um, the you know, ball movement, you know, the change in the orientation of the team. Chema Dai's first thought now is to get the ball and, you know, try and advance either by passing or by driving, you know, past the Instead of just hoofing the ball uh, clear as we used to do. So, like, there's, a, there's a clear ideology here. And it might take time to fully manifest it, but I can see what he's trying to do. And I'll say, give him the reins. Even though our next two games are, are crucial games against, against uh, South Africa and I think Benin Republic. Uh, but... I'll stick with him. No matter who you bring in, it is a tough assignment for any manager that you you bring in a coach that has never coached Nigeria before. Your first game is against South Africa, coach our cup qualifier. So what? So either way, we are between Denver and Deep Blue Sea, and I'll much rather you know side with Finney George, who has already spent time you know within the super good setup, already knows lots of the players and vice versa, and. You know, I keep am on the fact that has a good relationship with pretty much all of the players, and has a history of winning. My dad remind you the reigning champion of the NBF, even though it doesn't mean much to some people sitting across me. I'm still going to keep saying it. It's better to you know do that than you know go bring in you know some. If I'm talking foreign coaches and it's not ever Renard or someone that has a proven track record, we can't afford any anybody that has a proven track record. I are coming to coach Nigeria. You're on you're on serious with your life. Let me just inform you now. So that that, that already removes all the options. So you have to like within our price range. Within a limited budget, who is the best option? And I think that's Finity Judge, in my opinion. And I think that uh, I'm more comfortable with him than have a, a total overall in, have a new manager going through that international break in June uh, and then, you know, start, start your Super Eagles career with a, with a crucial game against South Africa. That's going to be difficult. So uh, for me, I'm comfortable with Finity. Hmm. Um, Tosin, you've already made it clear that you're not Team Finidi here. Uh, would you ask the NFF to go foreign or go local? Who would you actually prefer as the best bet to coach the national team? My problem is not with Finidi. Finidi is an excuse for incompetence hmm. for the Nigeria Football Federation. That's actually the main thing. So when you look at Finidi, I feel like Finidi can lead the next generation of Super Eagles players. He's, he's obviously, he's still learning his craft. He's developing as a coach. But the, 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 the situation where the Super Eagles of Nigeria are now, they are in win-now mode. When you have players like Victor Osimhen, you have players like Wilfred Ndidi, mm -hmm. Trust Ekong. These are, these are not, you understand, these are players at the peak of their careers. Like, if the goal is to qualify for the 2026 FIFA World Cup and to compete to win the 2020, obviously, 2025 Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco, which is like literally the goal. If that's the goal, I don't think Finidi is the man. It's, that's no disrespect to his coaching ability. Now, if the goal is to rebuild, let's say, okay, you know what? We are not going to qualify for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. We are not going to do much in 2025 Africa Cup of Nations. Let's actually build for the 2030 World Cup in, obviously, in Argentina. If, if you want look at it as a six-year plan. You understand? Build for the future. Obviously, you start with the young ones, Oyedika, you understand, Bruno Yemachi, those will be the pillar of the next team. That would be a very, very logical, log, um, a logical choice. But for me, I feel like we need a very, very competent manager as at the moment, because you look at the, the Super Eagles World Cup qualification group and you see that they, obviously, I think they have two points. They, they drew against Lesotho and they drew against Zimbabwe. Those are the teams that Tunde was here saying that they are United Nations. They, they need help from the United Nations. It turns out actually they can actually hold well on their own. And when you look at the qualification group, let me see. Some of us are no maths. 
six teams in a group, you play five, five. That's, that means you are playing 10 games, Abby. 10 games times three, that's 30 points to win the group. 30 because I was saying 2020, 2030 World Cup, you are looking at me as if you look at the 30 points. Out of the 30 points, you've already dropped four points. You've already dropped four points out of a possible six, which means you have 24. You need to get 24 points out of eight games. Obviously, and obviously, nobody's really going to get 24 points. Nobody's really going to get 24 out of eight. You look at South Africa, away. That's a very tough fixture. You look at Rwanda, away. That's a very tough fixture. Mm -hmm. Even the game against Benin Republic in Kutonu here, another very, very tough fixture. So overall, the complexities of the team, if the goal is to qualify for the World Cup in two years' time, I feel you need an experienced coach. If you want to build with young players, you understand, and integrate them for six-year projects, then uh, obviously go with you need Georgia. It's fine. Hmm. All right, let me bring you guys into the conversation. Tell me what you think. The Super Eagles 2-0 defeat against Mali, does it mean that Fini the Judge should not be continuing as the head coach of the national team? Who would you suggest? Who would you like to see? A foreign or a local coach? Drop your comments down below. Very much are interested in what you think. This has been Crossfire brought to you by Bet Bonanza. High odds, fast payouts.